Part four, the postulates. And you're going to need a calculator to take part fully in this video, so get yours ready. Uh, we must now learn and examine the two postulates of relativity upon which Einstein's theory is based. The first postulate reads as follows. The laws of physics are the same for all observers in all reference frames. No frame of reference is preferred. Galileo assumed that the laws of mechanics were the same in all inertial reference frames. In fact, Newton's first law of motion is born from this very assumption. Einstein extended that idea to include all the laws of physics, especially those of electromagnetism and optics. The most important thing about Einstein's first postulate is not necessarily what it says, more what it doesn't say. What it doesn't say is that the measured values for all physical quantities, so that could include time, distance, are the same for all observers. In fact, most are not the same. It is the laws of physics that are the same, which relate these measurements to each other. Postulate number two reads as follows. The speed of light in a vacuum has the same value c, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, in all directions and in all inertial reference frames. As things turned out, the speed of light was in fact the ultimate speed. The ultimate speed being the fastest possible speed that is possible within the laws of physics. Nothing is permitted to go faster than the speed of light. And anything that has mass can never reach the speed of light, no matter how much or for how long it is accelerated. Both of these postulates have been exhaustively tested and no exceptions have ever been found. The existence of a limit to the speed of accelerated electrons was shown in a 1964 experiment performed by William Bertozzi. This became known as the Bertozzi experiment if you wanted to look it up on YouTube or Wikipedia. Bertozzi accelerated electrons to various measured speeds and also measured their kinetic energies. He found that as the force that acts on a very fast electron is increased, the electron's measured kinetic energy increases towards, a, towards very large values, but its speed is asymptotically limited to the speed of light. As of 2020, the highest electron speed ever achieved in a particle accelerator was 99.9999999988% of the speed of light at the Large Electron-Positron Collider. That speed is still less than the ultimate speed, C, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Before we consider the speed of light and the second postulate, think for a second how the speed of a cannonball is not the same for all reference frames. So let's go back to our story with uh, Doc North sitting at the side of the road. You and me are driving along in the red car and then Mr Watling. We're driving along past Doc North at 50 miles an hour and then Mr Watling passes us by at 70 miles an hour. Now, we're going to have a cannonball firing, uh, sorry, a cannon, a cannonball firing machine. We're going to have a cannon loaded into the, the hood of our car. And as uh, Mr. Watling passes us, we want to shoot his car in the back with our cannon. But our cannon can only shoot cannonballs at a speed of 100 miles an hour. So, as far as we are concerned, when we shoot our cannonball at 100 miles an hour, we observe a cannonball speed of 100 miles an hour. But for Dr. North, who was sitting stationary at the time as we passed by at 50 miles an hour and then fired our cannonball at 100 miles an hour, Doc North observes the same cannonball to have a speed of 150 miles an hour. But because Mr. Watling is moving past us at 70 miles an hour, 
he only gets a shot in the back of the head with a cannonball traveling at uh, 80 miles an hour because he is going 20 miles an hour faster than we are. We shoot a cannonball at 100 miles an hour and so he perceives that to be a cannonball being fired at 80 miles an hour. So we have 150 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour and 80 miles an hour all for the exact same cannonball. So if we are to apply uh, Einstein's second postulate here, we are going to have to say substitute out our cannonball and have a laser firing machine instead, in which case as we shoot our laser, Doc North observes the speed of the laser to be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, we observe the speed of the laser to be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and so does Mr. Watling. And even if we were going at fractions of the speed of light in these vehicles, that speed of light would still be determined to be the same from all frames of reference. Okay. So, back to light and the second postulate. If the speed of light is the same in all inertial reference frames, then the speed of light that is emitted by moving source could be the same as the should be the same as the speed of light that is emitted by a source in the lab lab. Now this has been tested directly in an experiment of high precision. The light source was a particle known as a, a neutral pion, given the symbol pi with a zero at the top to show that it's neutral, an unstable short-lived particle that can be produced by collisions in a particle accelerator. It decays into two back-to-back -back gamma rays by the process, something like this. That will do for now. Two back-to-back -back gamma rays. Gamma rays are part of the electromagnetic spectrum and obey the speed of light postulate. In a 1964 experiment performed uh, by physicists at CERN, generating beams of pions moving at speeds of 0.99975 the speed of light with respect to the laboratory. The pions moving at this speed then decayed and produced two back-to-back -back gamma rays and the speeds of these back-to-back -back gamma rays were measured. They found that the speeds of the light emitted by the pions was the same as would have been measured if the pions had been at rest in the laboratory. Even when the pion is moving forwards with a speed very close to the speed of light and shoots one of its gamma rays out forwards and one of its gamma rays out backwards. Both of these have exactly the same speed as measured, as observed by the moving pion and the laboratory itself. Before we move on to consider how we measure an event in space-time, let's pause here for a simple problem. This is where you're going to need your calculator. So I've got mine ready. Here, I pose a question. An electron with a kinetic energy of 20 giga electron volts can be shown to have a speed of... So what we've got is 0.999999967, the speed of light. So that's three lots of three, line, three nines, 67C. And part A of this question is going to be, if such an electron raced a light pulse to the, to the nearest star outside of our solar system called Proxima Centauri, which is a distance of 4.3 light years away, by how much time would the light pulse win the race? Please give your answer to two significant figures and in the units milliseconds. Part B, using a high school understanding of kinetic energy, how many times more massive will this electron be compared to the often used 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms for the resting mass of an electron? Please give your answer to two sig figs. In the next video, we will look at measuring an event.